In this video, I'm going to talk about anatomic orientation terms. There are a lot of terms when talking about any kind of anatomy, and as we're going to start talking about neuroanatomy, there's a couple of areas in particular that can be quite confusing in regards to the terms. There are basically two systems of anatomic orientation terms in common use, and a few of these terms have synonyms, which can cause a lot of confusion. Most neural structures were first named in quadruped vertebrates, which means animals with spines that walk on four legs. So the standard anatomic orientation terms were used for their names. As an example, we're going to take a rat. And here we have a rat standing on its four legs, and this is the standard anatomic position of a rat. In this position, the entire central nervous system is basically horizontal. And to back up for a second, the central nervous system is mainly the brain and the spinal cord, and the brain has three main parts, the cerebrum, the brainstem, and the cerebellum. The cerebrum is attached to one end of the brainstem, the spinal cord is attached to the other end of the brainstem, and the cerebellum is attached to the back of the brainstem. The front of the horizontal cerebrum points toward the nose, Behind the horizontal cerebrum is the horizontal brainstem, and on top of the brainstem is the cerebellum. Behind the brainstem is the horizontal spinal cord, the end of which points toward the tail. So in the rat, in its standard anatomic position, the term rostral means toward the nose or forward. The term caudal means toward the tail or backwards. The term dorsal means up or toward the back, and the term ventral means down or toward the belly. For example, the cerebrum here is rostral to the brainstem because the cerebrum is in the direction of the nose from the brainstem. The spinal cord is caudal to the brainstem because it's in the direction of the tail in relation to the brainstem. The cerebellum is dorsal to the brainstem because it's up from the brainstem and the brainstem is ventral to the cerebellum because it's down from the cerebellum. A couple of other terms that are sometimes used are cranial, which refers to the skull, and cephalad, which refers to the head. And these terms are basically synonymous with rostral when you're talking about the rest of the body, but it gets very confusing when you're talking about structures inside the skull and the head. Here's our rat, and we're looking at it face on or directly at the front of the rat and we've drawn an imaginary vertical plane through the rat that separates the right and the left half. Now any horizontal line that goes through this plane is called a midline and this is a very common term referring to the midline of, of an entire organism or of a particular structure. Medial means something toward the midline whereas lateral means something away from the midline. For example, the nose is medial to the whiskers, it's toward the midline from the whiskers, and the whiskers are lateral to the nose. Next are the terms proximal and distal. Proximal means toward the center of the body, and distal means away from the center of the body. And particularly when you're talking about limbs, these are very useful because the limbs can be in different positions but the terms proximal and distal will always hold. For example, the hip is proximal to the toes, and the toes are distal from the hip. Next up are the terms ipsilateral and contralateral. Ipsilateral means on the same side of the body, and contralateral means on the opposite side of the body. For example, the left forelimb here is ipsilateral to the left hind limb, whereas the left forelimb and the right forelimb are contralateral from each other. They're on opposite sides of the body. Superficial means toward the surface, and deep means away from the surface. For example, if we're talking about the brain inside the skull, the skull is superficial from the brain, and the brain is deep to the skull. A special term is decusate or decusation. Decusate is the verb and decusation is the noun, and we use this term when we're talking about a bundle of axons in the central nervous system crossing the midline, either from right to left or vice versa. 
So in this example, we have a bundle of axons that starts on the right side of the central nervous system, crosses the midline, and then travels on the left side of the central nervous system. And that area where it crosses the midline is called the decusation. And many pathways in the nervous system decusate or cross from one side to the other. Now, if we stop talking about rats and such and start talking about humans instead, we use all the standard anatomic orientation terms we just discussed for the embryonic human during the first few weeks of development in the uterus when there's still a tail-like structure. So here we're looking from the side at a human embryo and the term rostral would refer toward where the nose is going to be at the front of the face. The term caudal will refer toward the end of the tail and ventral and dorsal are the same, ventral toward the front and dorsal toward the back. After the embryonic stage, however, the standard anatomic position of a human is not down on all fours horizontal, but is standing upright vertical with the arms down and the face and the palms pointing forward. Now you can still use the standard anatomic position terms, and some people do, although you can end up with some confusion for structures in the head and the legs. So in this standard anatomic position for human, rostral would be up, caudal would be down, and medial and lateral would be the same. But as we get into the head, things get a bit more confusing. Most of the head is oriented horizontally, like in the rat. So here we're looking from the side at the brain, and this top part is the cerebrum. And the cerebrum is still oriented horizontally. So just like in the rat, the term rostral will mean forward, the term caudal will mean backward, the term dorsal will mean up, and the term ventral will mean down in the cerebrum. However, the brainstem, the cerebellum, the spinal cord, and the rest of the body are oriented vertically. So that in these structures, rostral means up, caudal means down, ventral means forward, and dorsal means backwards. So basically these terms are turned 90 degrees to each other because the cerebrum is horizontal and the rest of the nervous system and the body is vertical. So there's a second set of anatomic orientation terms used in humans that could be called human anatomic position terms. And this system's used more by clinicians, probably because it's simpler, as the terms always mean the same direction, regardless of what body part you're talking about. In this system, we don't use the terms rostral, caudal, dorsal, or ventral. And instead, we use the term anterior for forward, posterior for backward, superior for up, inferior for down. And if we look at that same diagram where we're looking at the brain, those terms stay the same whether you're talking about the cerebrum or whether you're talking about the rest of the nervous system, which is simpler than rostral, caudal, ventral, and dorsal when you're talking about a structure like the brain. And all the other standard anatomic orientation terms are used the same way as they are in the rat. There are also a few terms used for planes relative to the human anatomic position. So that's a two-dimensional section or slice through the body. And these terms are axial for a horizontal plane that separates superior from inferior, coronal for a vertical plane that separates anterior from posterior, and sagittal for a vertical plane that separates right and left. And then the specific sagittal plane that's right on the midline, right in the middle, we call the mid-sagittal plane. Planes that are at any other angle are called oblique, and you have to give more information to try to describe an oblique plane. These planes, or sections, are used to discuss anatomy, pathology, and imaging in two-dimensional views of structures. One last little problematic term area is that throughout these videos, I'm going to use the words arm and leg as they're used in informal English and by most clinicians, at least most of the time instead of the formal anatomic terms, upper and lower extremity, because I find them cumbersome. The distinction is important because confusion can occur when anatomists or some clinicians use the word arm to refer to only the part between the shoulder and the elbow, 
and the word leg to refer to only the part between the knee and the ankle. So I just refer to all of this as arm and all of this as leg, as is usually done in informal English.